All right, so let's talk about some ways to do some bulk buildup. We've got this ring, this giant monstrosity I've been working on. Let's get that in focus. And there's a whole bunch of gaps, right? I've slabbed out some sections, I've filed out some sections, and really built up the material here. But um, the rest can't be done with a Bic lighter, right? It's just going to take too long. Uh, the lighter's going to heat up. It's just not an effective way to do mass buildup. So I'm switching to the alcohol lamp. And what I've got here is some extra debris and then a small feed stick. And I just want to show a couple of techniques to really lay down the material thick um, as you're going. And so we've got our handy dandy uh, pokey spoonie tool, right? There's the pokey end and the spoonie tool end. And that's just for heating and spot blending and, and repairs and welding. So that'll come in as we go. But we're going to light our alcohol lamp, which was already pre-filled and give it just a little bit of heat and make sure it's in the shot properly. And so what we've got here is the ability, right, move some stuff out of the way, to heat our tool, right, and the tool will go gloss. It's usually black from the soot of burning remnant wax, but when that wax goes gloss, you know you're ready to pick up a chunk, right, and you should just be able to touch down and lift it with. And if you can't lift it with, um, you're either too hot, not hot enough, or you're just trying to take a chunk that's just far too big for your surface area. So some of these tools you can get um, from the jewelry store in different sizes, and they'll work just fine. So we're going to patch the top. So I've got a hot chunk. And just remember the thermal mass held by your hot tool is what's putting enough energy to melt the bottom surface of your cold like ring wax or part wax to bring it up to temperature to fuse with that molten piece okay and so from there you can come in and you know, redefine the, uh, the areas you're trying to fuse so I'm cutting and then I'm switching to the back side and smoothing or you can you can really cheat and be super lazy. And I am very lazy. You can heat it until your material's meniscus just falls directly on your piece. Okay. And you can build up your wax that way. But the problem is a lot of the time the wax wants to follow the heat. And so when you do that, it doesn't necessarily go where you intended. So I'm going to do that one more time so we get a better field of view for what's happening. And this requires a lot of what I would call the octopus brain. Uh, if you look at lamp workers and glass blowers, they understand this glass transition. And this is what it's called for, um, called in multiple disciplines, multiple materials, whether it's wax or plastic or um, glass. There's this melting point where it has this fluid behavior you have to keep track of. And so you just sit there and try and figure out how you can add your material, lay it on hot. And this gives you a cleaner bond, but it's, when I say cleaner, I mean your wax isn't dirty, but your joint looks like crap, right? So I'm just heating that up and building it up. And then you have to start alternating between rotating your part and your melting part. And then you'll see that all this wax here has flowed in an area I don't want. So I've got to bring it all back. So I'm flame polishing it right now. And you've got to walk this little goober all the way back to where you need it. And so the disadvantage is you've got to deal with a whole bunch of flow dynamics that you weren't planning on. And you get this blob and you're like, well, I didn't want that blob there and now I've got to move it. And so you have to ask yourself, which process do you feel more comfortable with? Because as you go back and forth, you realize you're just chasing this giant drip. And so I like to marry the two and I come back with my hot tool.
I just scrape it all back to where I need it. And it's it's like a hot squeegee at this point, and so you can get a pretty smooth action. But just know that the bond on the surface may not be as clean. And so there are certain things you're going to do to build that back up by just picking up wax and, and making sure that it's flowing. So I'm just coming back with a high gloss finish. Turn one of these lights off just so this uh, flame over here right, is a little more visible. Or maybe I'll put something tall in the way to just shadow that spot. Okay, so if you can't see it on the camera, I'm pretty sure the people watching are wondering what's happening. So we've got our full heart. I'm just laying it across that surface, getting a nice flat surface, something smooth and polished. That way when we hit it with a file, it's, it's pretty much just a quick pass. Um, and the purpose of this is not just to make it a smooth finish, right? Because you could, you could easily dress this with a file, but there are tiny little regions like right here where it's very very transparent and you can see this thin line that's an indication that there's not full bonding so if you're ever looking for non-uniform bonds like whether or not your wax is welded correctly or really any materials bonded to any other material uh, if there's a change in the optical refraction of the material like when you're doing borocosilicate that's an indicator that a crack has started to form, and that crack will want to grow and propagate throughout your part. Um, so you want to keep an eye out for those and see if you can get your material hot enough to uh, close the crack, but not melt your piece into a puddle. And, and that is a, a fine balance. So when your wax working, this is not a highly caffeinated activity. This is not something you're going to do when you're feeling rushed. If you're feeling rushed, just decide you're not going to get this done until later. Okay. So now we've got this big blob, and what do we want to do about that? Sometimes it's not worth it. So I always look for an index that the cooling ratio between the top layer and the bottom layer isn't strong enough. And then I'll just try and get in there with my under fingernail and peel it up. And that saves you so much more work than trying to carve that back smooth. But this is a great example of when you don't get good bonding. And over here, you can see where it broke off. Our weld is actually, let me get that in focus. Our weld is actually very, very strong at that joint. Okay. So all we need to do now is sort of build up this trench area. And we can do that by just recollecting all of our wax over here and just slowly building it up. So I think what I'm going to do is switch to time lapse and we'll do a little short version of that. 